Hi, I'm John Walkup, and I'm a child and adolescent psychiatrist and the director of child and adolescent psychiatry at Weill Cornell Medicine and New York Presbyterian Hospital. I'm here to talk about coprolalia, echolalia, and pallidolalia. These are three symptoms, not very common in Tourette syndrome, but often thought about as hallmark or essential symptoms for Tourette syndrome diagnosis. Types of vocal tics. Coprolalia, as strictly defined, really means the uttering of swear words. But in Tourette syndrome, people who have coprolalia oftentimes have swear words, racial epithets, sexual epithets, or other kinds of slang or words that really are socially inappropriate and, and shocking to the person who might hear them or experience being with a person with Tourette. Echolalia is really the repeating of other people's words or phrases. So for example, if someone were to ask me a question, where are you going? If I was having echolalia, I would say, where are you going? I am going to the store. And that repetition of the phrase is really what we sometimes see in people with uh, tic disorders or Tourette. Similarly, palilalia is the repetition of one's own words, where one will say something like, I'm going to the store, I'm going to the store, or that's exciting, exciting, where someone would repeat their own words. I think it's important to understand when you're talking about coprolalia, echolalia and palilalia, that there's a different quality to, to the tone that people use when they have those symptoms. So when people are swearing, you can really tell that they're swearing at something or about something. But more often than not, with coprolalia, the sound of the swear word is guttural and gruff and sounds more like a grunt or a bark. So while some families get very confused about these different kinds of verbal tics as to what's a tic and what's not, it's really important to understand that the quality of the sound is a tip-off for understanding whether it's a tic or whether it's common swear words or the repetition of one's own words or the repetition of someone else's words. Tourette diagnosis. In order to receive a diagnosis of Tourette syndrome, the person has to have motor tics and vocal tics, but they don't have to have coprolalia, palilalia, echolalia in order to receive the diagnosis. As you can imagine, in the mid-1960s, when there were only 100 reported cases, those reported cases often talked about or described some of the more unusual or exotic features that we see in the rare patient with Tourette syndrome. And sadly, those case descriptions have some durability to them. So there are some clinicians who are still oriented to a very old idea of what Tourette syndrome is. Tourette syndrome today isn't an adult with coprolalia. It is really a child, adolescent, and young adult who has vocal tics, motor tics, and it really oftentimes uh, suffering from other kinds of conditions like ADHD, anxiety, or obsessive compulsive symptoms. That's really the modern face of Tourette. Correcting misperceptions about Tourette syndrome. We have been working very hard at the Tourette Association to present the modern face of what Tourette syndrome really is. And Tourette syndrome nowadays isn't the adult with coprolalia like was first reported in the mid-1960s, but it really is a young person, a teenager, a young adult who suffers from motor and vocal tics and also has other kind of complicated comorbidities like attention deficit disorder, anxiety, or obsessive compulsive type symptoms. That outreach, supported by the Center for Disease Control, has reached hundreds of doctors and I think we're doing an admirable job of really shifting the world's view of Tourette to one that is much more modern and updated about the real challenges that people with Tourette face today. For more information, visit the Tourette Association website at Tourette.org.